Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the only ultra-rapid-acting inhaled insulin. By Dexcom, keeping you in control with an integrated system for diabetes management. And by T1D Exchange, dedicated to improving outcomes for the entire T1D population. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, Tandem Diabetes has made some big moves recently, acquiring two new companies. One makes infusion sets, the other a patch pump called Siggy. And Tandem's tiny Moby pump is in front of the FDA right now. We're finding out how it may all come together. Moby will be here sooner than Siggy will be here. Moby is, as I said, a 23 product for us. Siggy sits a little bit further out. We still need to go through further development and obviously we'll have to get through our own regulatory process with Siggy further down the road. And so they exist side by side. They serve slightly different needs. That's Tandem's Executive Vice President and Chief Strategy Officer, Elizabeth Gasser. We talk about how these acquisitions have changed Tandem's roadmap. You may remember they released that look into the future last year. We also find out more about Dexcom G7 integration, software updates, and a lot more. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. You know, I'm always so glad to have you here. And we aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. I'm your host, Stacey Sims. And, you know, after a few years of what seemed like, frankly, not a lot of progress at all, I feel like we're getting some big moves now, right? I mean, not just from FDA approvals, which are seem to be digging out from that big slowdown that happened during the first two years of COVID, but also through some big company moves. Last year, Tandem Diabetes acquired Capillary Biomedical, which makes infusion sets. And they also purchased AMF Medical, which makes the Siggy pump. It's important to note that neither acquired company has a commercially released product. These are all in development. I spoke to the folks at Siggy, I guess the folks at AMF Medical that makes the Siggy pump. I spoke to them last year, right around this time. They had received breakthrough device designation from the US FDA, not approved, still a long way from that. But it was really interesting to talk to them. And I will link up that episode in the show notes for this one. Of course, we're going to talk about it more today as well. I spoke to this week's guest, Tandem's EVP and Chief Strategy Officer, Elizabeth Gasser, last year around this time as well. That interview was in January of 2022. And I'm going to link that episode up. If you go in there, you can see the really interesting links that they gave us. The roadmap that we talked about, the five-year plan for tandem diabetes graphics and the announcement video. So knowing that things are going to change now with these acquisitions and other changes that happen, I was really glad that Elizabeth Gasser, she says, call her Liz. So I do. I was really glad that Liz decided to come back on. As usual, I brought as many questions to her as I could including what's happening with Dexcom G7 and their reaction to the Tidepool Loop approval. So a lot to talk about, and that's coming up. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Afreza. And when it comes right down to it, there hasn't been a lot of innovation for insulin. I mean, there are different brands, right? But nothing really unique when it comes to insulin delivery, except for Afreza. Afreza is unique because it is the only ultra-rapid-acting inhaled insulin available. It starts working quickly without the need for injections at mealtime. Once you breathe a Frezza into your lungs using the inhaler, insulin appears in your bloodstream in less than one minute, and it may start reducing blood sugar in about 12 minutes. Find out more and see if a Frezza is right for you. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Afrezza logo. Afrezza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium, and it's not for patients with chronic lung disease such as asthma or COPD or for patients allergic to insulin. Tell your doctor if you ever smoked, have ever had kidney or liver problems, history of lung cancer, or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace lung-acting insulin with Afrezza. Afrezza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning medication guide and instructions for use on afrezza.com slash safety. Liz, thank you so much for joining me. We have a lot to get through, but thank you so much for jumping on the show and spending some time with me and my listeners. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It's always fun to talk with you, Stacey. Thank you so much. That's great to hear. I love learning about what's going on in the technology part of the diabetes community. So I have a laundry list of questions. (laughs) Let me just jump in. And my listeners sent in a lot of these. So this is top of mind with the community, as I'm sure you know. There's so much going on at Tandem right now. 
But first, can you talk a little bit about integration with Dexcom G7? They told us they're going to launch in the United States sometime during the first quarter. So that clock is ticking. Can you talk about integration with the latest version of Dexcom? Absolutely. And this is something we've been working on for a while. As you know, we've got a long history of working with Dexcom and G7 at this point represents our fourth integration. We went through G4, G5, G6, and (laughs) now G7. The teams are working well together. Obviously, there's a lot to do when you're integrating a new sensor, the variety of development and testing efforts. And in some markets, we will um, obviously have to go through some regulatory milestones as well to bring it to market. Uh, But we still continue to anticipate coming to market fairly soon after the G7 launches here in the US. Our current goal is to be in market within one to two quarters. As I said, the timing depends on a number of things. What I would want your uh, your listeners to, to know, though, is uh, obviously an, until we um, announce that it's integrated, um, please don't upgrade to uh, the, the G7 and expect it to, to work with the T-Slim. We obviously need to make sure it's, it's validated and, and in market. But we're working hard um, and we're excited to bring it to all of our customers. If someone tried to do that, there's not even, I don't know, is there a sensor number, is there a transmitter number on the G7? It just would not, I assume that the T-Slim X2 just would not take that. As it, a- it won't pair with it. Um, what we need to do when, when we've finished the integration, we will push a software update, which will allow the T-Slim to add G7 support, and then you can pair a G7 sensor with it. Is the idea to be able, as the user, to choose either the G6 or the G7? Would you be able to go back and forth? Absolutely. That is exactly what we intend to do. That strikes me as the first time, I mean, we get all excited about interoperability, Liz, but it strikes me as the first time maybe that people will be able to choose their CGM without changing their pump, even though it's the same brand of CGM. That's absolutely right. And that's the beauty of being able to do this through a software update. Uh, We can implement it as a menu option on the pump. Are there any other changes that would come from that Dexcom integration? Are there features or anything? Or is it just the you'd get the benefits of what's in the G7 itself? Well, what we tend to do is is we target the integrations to come with a software release. And so there will be you know other feature improvements that, that we strive to make with every major new software release for the pump. But the focus of the release will very much be on the G7 integration. Got it. Uh, can you share any of those software improvements? I know people have been talking about some adjustments perhaps to control IQ to make it more aggressive in some ways? Uh, We're always looking at where we can make improvements. The release that is coming out with G7 is not explicitly a control IQ update release. We can talk uh, about the various feature improvements we are making on control IQ, but that's not the focus for this upcoming release. Is that sooner than the G7 update, you think, or is that something that's down the road? No, it's it's down the road. We have an ongoing program to, to continue to refine the Control IQ feature set we're working on, you know, greater personalization. Let's talk about something that happened a couple of weeks ago, and that is the acquisition of AMF, the company that makes the Siggy pump. Mm. Um, what is the thinking behind this acquisition? This is so interesting. The Siggy is a patch pump, right? That's absolutely right. It's a tubeless patch pump. Yeah. <laughs> it's very <laughs> exciting for us. Well, and it is. It's very interesting. It's very exciting. A year or two ago, Tandem laid out a really ambitious roadmap for different pumps and working toward a patch pump eventually. I assume this means that it's going to perhaps come in the plan sooner. Does it supplant the pump that we had talked about a year ago? Can you tell me a little bit more about what your plans are for Siggy? Happy to, absolutely. And uh, I'm glad that you brought up the roadmap presentation that that we gave uh, about a year ago now, because we did at that time say... Uh, that our intention was very explicitly to bring a portfolio of devices to market, including a, a tubeless patch option. Because you know, we do believe deeply that there is no one size fits all in diabetes. We do believe very much in offering choice, you know, including, as we've just talked about, with multiple generations of, of CGM. And so we were looking at how we could do that for our customers, for, for the people who use our pumps. And we did have an internal program um, that we were pursuing in parallel. But we were also talking to a number of third party companies who were building their own devices, uh, including AMF Medical with the Siggy pump. Uh, And we did ultimately decide that the the better path for us was to pursue an acquisition. 
Uh, and in large part, that it's, it's got a lot to do with, with the device itself. The Siggy Pump, it's beautifully designed. It's small. It's ergonomic. For us, you know as well, we, we very much believe in, in bringing better design to our users. And it's something that's, that's widely lacking in, in, in medtech or has been for decades. And it, it's something that's at the core of, of Tandem's DNA, starting with the X2. And so we fell in love with the device itself. As I said, it's, it's, it's a fabulous small pump. But we also, as we went through the process of considering how we bring the right products to market, really started to appreciate the advantages of this pump in particular. It's obviously highly wearable, but it also is a, it's a pre-fill pump. There's no other patch out there quite like it, um, but the intention is to use pre-filled insulin cartridges to really improve the ease of filling and putting the pump on. So instead of you know filling the cartridge and, and, and priming the tubing, you'll, you'll pop the cap off, you'll pop the cartridge in, click, snap, go. Right? So very much focused on simplicity and ease of use there. And then the other thing that we had to confront as we were thinking about what we did next was, you know, the program we had internally was pointed at delivering a disposable. And we really paused and said, okay, well, we're a durable device company. And we're in the durable space today because we really do believe in minimizing you know, the waste that's associated with the products that we bring to market. And so the lovely thing about the Siggy pump is it's, it's a durable pump. It's not disposable. So we're not um, wasting electronics. We're not throwing away electronics every few days. Uh, and by that, I mean batteries and you know, Bluetooth chips to, uh, that, through which we get connectivity. But then it's also detachable because it's a durable system. You, you have an, it, it's a two-part system, right? You have an on-body site and then the pump itself comes off. And the nice benefit of that is, is you're not losing insulin. When life gets in the way, you can take it off without wasting the insulin that's been filled into the pump. There was a lot of advantages to the product. We also fell in love with the team. They're very strong. There's very strong cultural alignment between us and the, the team in Switzerland. Uh, we come from a very similar design philosophy. And obviously, as you know, Switzerland, is, it's got a, a world-renowned reputation for making small, precise devices. Really, it all came, came together in the middle of last year. And, and we did ultimately um, decide to suspend our own internal patch development program in favor of pursuing this option. I spoke to the folks at Sigi a while back, and as you listen, I will link up that episode if you really want to get a deep dive into what this product is. But Liz, one thing that really stands out to me, as you already mentioned, not to put too fine a point on it, is that it is not a disposable pump. People are used to thinking of patch pumps as you use them once and throw them away. As you listen, I'll try to describe it. The infusion yeah. set, like a tubed pump, stays on the body, but the pump you get, at least in the first iteration from Sigi, they had said you'd get two pumps so you could recharge one while the other one was on your body and then switch them out. When With my son's tubed pump, he can take that off in lots of situations. That's one of the reasons why he really likes it. Can the Siggy pump be removed for things like sports and stuff like that, or, or you only remove it when you change it? No, it can be taken off the off the body patch. And so that's that's a big part of the appeal. As you say, when you need to take it off, you can take it off without wasting the insulin, and then you can put it right back on again. That's so interesting. We, we also talked during that roadmap conversation about the Moby pump, which is not completely tubeless. There's a small tube on it. I believe that has been filed for FDA approval. Any changes then in the short term or the long term for the Moby pump? No, we're still committed to bringing the Moby pump to market. And that's something that we are planning to bring to market in the latter part of 2023. As you said, we've submitted it to the FDA. We did that late last year. And we're in the process of active conversation with them. As you know, it's a, it's a dialogue, it's a process. They have some feedback for us as, as we go through their approval cycle. And so we remain excited to bring this to patients. I, I think the best way to think about the, the, the two different pumps is, you know, as I said, they're part of a portfolio. Moby will be here sooner than Siggy will be here. Moby is, as I said, a 23 product for us. Siggy sits a little bit further out. We still need to go through further development and obviously, we'll have to get through our own regulatory process with Siggy further down the road. And so they exist side by side. They serve slightly different needs. There's, as we've just discussed, Siggy is very much designed for tubeless wear. It's tubeless only. Whereas with Moby, it, it's a tubed pump, which comes with different considerations. Certainly, um, flexibility of wear options. Obviously, there's a, there's a smaller body footprint with some of the infusion set options that we have. And really, it'll be um, a continuum between the two devices. 
I know when something is in front of the FDA, you you kind of are often limited on what you can say. But did anything change from what we talked about with Moby, what was publicly released, to when it was given to the FDA? Well, as we talked about a, a, a year ago, it really is, it's consistent with what we talked about. It's a pump that's fully controlled by the smartphone. It is a you know, 200 unit pump, small form factor, wireless charging, waterproof, and with a diversity of infusion set options that come with it, including a, a short uh, five inch set that is, facilitates different on-body wear options. When you talk about fully controlled by the phone, Mm -hmm. right now, the mobile bolus function, which I got to say, my son absolutely loves, although he did want me to tell you, he thinks there's too much security. And I said, they probably can't do a lot about that right now. But he said, you know, why does it have to read my face every single time I use it? I said, I would let you know that he thinks there should be less security. But the Mobi needs, as you said, full phone functionality. When that comes, do you anticipate it also coming for the T-Slim X2? Would that be at the same time? I definitely know that there's a a request from from our customer base for more control options with the mobile bolus app for T-Slim. The focus with the Mobi uh, app release will be on for control for Mobi. But we do continue to look at how to bring some of those features back to um, the T-Slim X2. So it won't be in the Mobi app because that will be for the Mobi pump. But as we look at the mobile bolus app roadmap, you know, we, we're certainly aware of, of user requests to do more, you know, including things like clearing alarms. Got it. Yeah. And that makes sense, too. I wasn't thinking that way there would be one app for Mobi and one app for control of the T-Slim pump. No comment on Benny's uh, idea of less security for everyone. I'll make sure that our uh, engineering and product teams hear the request. <laughs> Need the special teen settings. That's another story altogether. That is indeed. You've mentioned infusion sets a couple of times. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, Capillary Biomedical. This is another company acquired not too long ago. I get very excited when I hear about any improvement with infusion sets. My son has worn a pump since 2007. The weak link of every system has been how it connects to the body. There aren't enough options. None of them seem to work that well. They don't last long enough. I could go on and on. Talk to me about this acquisition and what they do, what they offer. Right back to our interview, we'll start talking about those new acquisitions by Tandem. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dexcom. And we have used Dexcom for so long now that it is hard to remember what it was like before we started, right? I mean, I haven't exactly forgotten because, boy, it was a lot of work, but it is so different now. Benny was diagnosed right before he turned two. And we were doing something like 10 finger sticks a day, at least. Even when he was a little older, we still did at least six to eight every day. And of course, more when he wasn't feeling well. But with each iteration of Dexcom, we have done fewer and fewer finger sticks. The latest generation, the Dexcom G6, eliminates finger sticks for calibration and diabetes treatment decisions. Just thinking about Benny's little worn out fingertips makes me so glad that Dexcom has helped us come so far. He didn't start using them until he was nine years old. And his fingertips are healthy and smooth, which I, I honestly never thought would happen when he was in preschool. If your glucose alerts and readings from the G6 do not match symptoms or expectations, use a blood glucose meter to make diabetes treatment decisions. Learn more. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. Now back to Liz Gasser talking about the newest acquisitions by Tandem. Happy to. And uh, as you said, we, we did two acquisitions in the yeah. past year, which is, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's quite, a, quite something. And it's, uh, it's quite a lot. So CapBio, uh, as you say, um, Capillary Bio, um, maker of an infusion set, specifically uh, an extended wear infusion set. Um, they also have a, a novel cannula technology. And so our focus there is, is, look, we hear you. We see user feedback on, on infusion sets all the time. And yes, as you say, we need to make it easier to put on, easier to wear. We need to help people wear it for longer. We need to reduce waste. Those are all focuses of our um, infusion set program. And, and for us, we work with partners today. We have worked with, with partners for many years. You know, what led us to Capillary Bio is they've been working on an extended seven-day wear set We are excited to take that forward and and move that into clinical trial in the year ahead. As I said, the cannula itself is also novel. It's designed to be significantly more resistant to kinking. 
such that we can help with improved site integrity, but also fewer occlusions and occlusion alerts. And so really, it's a it's a great technology package. Um, we're still working to bring it to market. It, it won't be commercial for a little while, but we're hopeful it can deliver meaningful benefits to our customers. Probably a dumb question. Does it need FDA approval? Is it all, or is any of this already FDA approved? It will need an FDA submission. With the Mobi and with Siggy and with T-Slim, I mean, this, I, you, know, you look at the myriad of infusion sets that you might need. I mean, could they all be interchangeable? Is that one of the goals or? Or would you make, you know, several different infusion sets for each pump? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to picture how it would work. Well, there's, yes, there's clearly a, a there's a, a product strategy and packaging question um, in there, and it's something we'll we'll need to work through. Uh, but right now, the the intent is that we have a a port we will have a portfolio of tubed pumps. Those have our as as you're familiar our um, our T lock connector on them. And then for all of the infusion sets that we offer, the goal is for interchangeability and mix and match. Now, will every infusion set work with every pump? I think we'll need to work through that. There may be some different labeling for different systems. But the goal is to have a diversity of infusion set options and a portfolio of pumps and allow people to mix and match for the choices that make sense to them. Yeah. It always amazed me that the infusion set company I've talked to them before on the podcast. You know, they, they make the infusion sets for so many different pumps, not just in the United States. And it's almost like, a, a, you know, there is no one size fits all, but they try to do their best to make it that way. So I'm really heartened and excited to see what comes out of this, because as I said, it's, it's one of those issues that we all have seen, you know, real problems over the years and, and not a lot of, you know, all due respect to Unimedical, but it doesn't seem like there's been a lot of changes made or, you know, a lot of strides forward. So I'm really excited to see what happens here. I did reach out to Capillary Biomedical when the announcement came through and they they turned me down flat. So I'll have to circle back and see when they when you all get this together, let's have a more in-depth conversation about um, not many other people want to talk about the deep dive of an infusion set. But, you know, we would like to. Absolutely. Um, we'll be back with in, a, in about a year with another episode, Stacey. I think yeah, that would be great. Or sooner. or sooner. Or <laughs> sooner. You know, you mentioned you mentioned Moby as a 2023 product, so maybe sooner. Deal. <laughs> <clears throat> Excellent. I love it. You had mentioned, and again, as you listen, you know, we're trying to get through a lot here. So I know you want me to probably go more in depth on more things, but I'm doing my best here. You had mentioned a little bit of Control IQ and, and adjustments and software updates. Could you speak for just a moment about any changes? Because I hear from listeners all the time, Control IQ came out in, in 2020. We do love the system, but many people, you know, including myself, I'll put myself in there, really my son would like some more maybe aggressive settings, things like a perhaps lower range or more auto bolus power. Can you speak to any specifics coming to Control IQ? I'm not going to get too deep into the into the specifics because we have we have a little bit of um, you know, sequencing that that we're doing with with our feature roadmap here. What I will say is, that in the very near term, the, the the immediate focus is on making sure we can get expanded indications, uh, and so that means bring, being able to bring it to a broader section of the peds community, age two plus. And then we're also looking at uh, making sure that we are indicated for, for type 2 as well so that we can al- allow more type 2s to, to benefit from our pump and from Control IQ. As you know, we can't actively market Control IQ to type 2 today without an indication. So that's phase one for us. And then phase two, really looking at greater personalization, ease of use, usability, looking at lower ranges as part of that. But obviously, there's a, a number of other features that we're seeking to bring to market as well. And so we're really taking our time just to see um, what the right combination is at the right time. So I, I know you want me to say more, um, but unfortunately, we're going to have to leave that one. I will tell you, though, Liz, I'm very heartened to hear so much more attention paid to people with type 2 and getting more access to insulin pumps and automated systems. I saw a study recently, and forgive me, I don't remember which pump it was or if they said, but it showed something like when people with type 2 started an automated system, they spent eight hours more a day in range. Now I'm taking this from memory, so I'll, I'll look it up and I'll link it up when, when the episode comes out. But I assume you've already done a lot of studies with folks with type 2. And are you able to share? Have you seen some of those similar results that they're just doing so much better? I absolutely agree with you. We have real world data of, of people with type 2 you know, on our pumps who, who've been prescribed by their physician. 
we've also been doing studies and I agree with you that the benefits are immediate and they are sustained and they are meaningful. People with type 2 on insulin intensive therapy benefit just as much from automated algorithms as people with type 1. I got some questions about mobile bolus in the UK and outside the US. Can you share a little bit about what our, as we, from my perspective, our international listeners can expect? Mm. Unfortunately, I don't have an update on timing that I can Mm. share with you today. We are working really hard to bring mobile bolus to our non-US markets, and we will update our customers as soon as we're able to. Am I correct in the past, I don't want to rehash everything, but just to be clear, that the T-Connect program and app as we know it in the US, that that's not going to be what happens? Are you moving on from that internationally? I, I'm sorry, I can't remember as I'm asking this. It will be the mobile bolus app, which um, some people do know is the T-Connect app. So it'll be a, an app delivery, but we don't have an app in our international markets today. Got it. One of the things I wanted to ask, this came up very recently. Tidepool was just approved by the FDA for their app, their software program. And I think most of us expected this to also be followed by announcement that they would be compatible with Omnipod insulate products and perhaps with Medtronic, two partners they'd had since the beginning. But when I talked to their CEO last week, Howard, look, he said, no, those agreements are are off. They are not launching with those pumps. He indicated they did have a pump partner. Of course, it was with an ACE pump. And in the United States, that's just tandem. Uh, Are you talking to Tidepool? Is this something that, that may happen? Would Tidepool isn't currently part of our roadmap today. It's not an integration that we're currently working on. As you know, and as we've just been talking about, we remain very committed to continuing to evolve Control IQ uh, for our customers. And so um, I'm afraid I can't add any more color on that one. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for answering that, at least. One of the questions I get asked a lot is integration with Libre 3. And I know that they are not yet, I believe they're not yet considered an ICGM, or at least not in the United States. Any update on that in terms of possibly working with Tandem? We don't actually comment specifically on which version of Libre we are working with or launching with. We continue to have a, a great ongoing relationship with Abbott. We're integrating with Libre. And we are hopeful that we will be able to bring this to market relatively soon. Uh, within one to two quarters of Abbott's uh, approval for use with AID systems in the U.S. Before I let you go, let's talk about cost for just a moment, if we could. In the past, Tandem has had some programs for free software updates. Can you talk at all about the G7 update or the changeover to Mobi if someone's an existing customer? Are there pathways in place yet for upgrades and things like that? Yes, um, a couple of different pieces embedded in that question. So in terms of the software updates, we do offer free software updates to in-warranty customers. Um, And as you know, we have a four-year warranty on our pump. Uh, And you may ask, well, why do you have to be in warranty? And obviously for us, there's a lot of compatibility testing that has to happen over a four-year period. And so we want to make sure that the the, the pump version can support the software versions, can interface with the, the, the user's phones appropriately. Uh, and so keeping that current is very important. So we have that program. And then as, as you look at the Mobi launch, we, we do have a, a choice program that we are offering um, such that users who do buy a, a T-Slim today have pathways to a Mobi pump when it launches. Has anything changed? And again, I'm getting a bit into the weeds here, but I just want to make sure, has anything changed in terms of Medicare coverage? Yeah, well, we are, um, we are working with others in the industry in terms of changing the thresholds for type 2. Mm. And that's a conversation with CMS and, and Medicare, obviously, uh, inter- specifically focusing on questioning the ongoing need for something like a C-peptide test before a pump can be prescribed, because it's not necessarily you know, clinically deterministic. So we have those conversations going on. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about that I missed before I kind of start wrapping us up? Well, I think we covered a pretty yeah. <laughs> significant amount of ground. I think all, all I would just seek to underscore as, as, as we wrap up here is, you know, we really are very much committed to delivering choice to our customers here, whether it's through our portfolio of devices, whether it's through a diversity of infusion sets, whether it's through, you know, multiple CGM integrations, different app impl- implementations. And it's ambitious, but we believe it's important. Uh, we don't, as I said, one size fits all does not work for diabetes. and so. 
we're excited to keep going. We remain committed to uh, continuing to pursue our roadmap and um, looking forward to continuing to deliver great products to our customers. Well, Liz, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, As you listen, hopefully you haven't noticed, but boy, we had so many technical issues with this. I hung up on Liz like five times. So thank you for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the information you shared today. Thanks so much for joining me. My pleasure, Stacey. Thank you so much. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. All right, we tried to put a lot of information into that interview. And as she said, she will come back and talk more about Moby, fingers crossed, maybe later this year. I'd love to know what you think. I'm going to post in the Facebook group, Diabetes Connections, the group. Um, Tide Pool Loop. I, I don't know about you, but when I talked to Howard Look about this, initially, I thought he was saying it would be tandem. He didn't say that. I, I totally inferred that from clues I thought I was getting, which I obviously was not getting. It's a pump now that is not yet approved in the United States right? Uh, pure speculation here. Would it be the Ipsomed pump or the, but it's the Kaleido pump, you know, two pumps available in Europe. I also think there's an outside chance that it could be Beta Bionics Islet. I mean, if there's a pump in development right now that's easy to set up for interoperability, maybe it comes from the geniuses at Beta Bionics. So I don't know, we've got a long way to go to figure that out, but I'll keep you posted. I also have to say, Um, You know, that was Benny's question that I threw in there about a more aggressive control IQ. But I really did think that was coming. I know they're working on that. I think that, hey, we're three years past control IQ, which is hard to believe. But I I did think there would be an update by now. But hey, G7 integration will be fantastic when that comes. Well, I was going to say so we can be grateful. But you know what? We can be greedy, too. Let's ask for the moon. And I don't think more aggressive bolusing is asking for the moon. Certainly, we love it. I mean, control IQ has been a home run for Benny. But yeah, let's, I hope that happens sooner rather than later. Okay, next up, I want to tell you a little bit about where we are going and what's going on. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the T1D Exchange. I've talked about this before. It's a research study conducted online over time, and it's open to adults and kids with type 1 living in the U.S. Basically, they ask you to complete surveys and sign up for studies on specific topics related to type 1. The idea here is to accelerate the discovery and development of new treatments and technologies and support policy or insurance changes that help the T1D community. So by sharing opinions, experiences, and data, you can help advance meaningful T1D treatment care and policy. Your personal information remains confidential. Your participation is fully voluntary. This is such a good group, and it's so easy to get started. Head on over to the T1D Exchange Registry at t1dexchange.org slash Stacy. That is t1dexchange.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. We also have links in the show notes and on the website. We've got some fun stuff coming up back on the road later this month. The JDRF Summit in North Carolina is happening in Greensboro. I did see that they were at capacity. There's a waiting list. So, you know, I got to, I'm hesitating here, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think that's not good. We only have one summit for all of North Carolina now. And if it's full this far in advance, the need is there. Let's have another summit or let's expand the capacity. That is not serving this community well if it's full and there's a waiting list. It's great for JDRF. I'm excited. Obviously, the need is there. But uh, you understand what I'm saying there. The, The need is not being met. But I am excited to see everybody and talk with Rob. Haven't seen him in person since the summer. He's a great advocate. If you haven't followed him, he does a terrific podcast as well. I am doing a breakout session at this summit called Reframe Your Diabetes Parent Brain. It's all about taking those mom fail moments, and it's always a mom fail, taking those moments and reframing them to see how we're not failing. We're really doing great. So I'm excited about that. It's more than just putting on some rose-colored glasses. I'm going to lead people through an exercise or two that is fun and can really help you get through to the other side. And I'm going to be doing two webinars for my local groups. I will put those in the newsletters coming up as well. If you want to join, this grew out of some questions in my North Carolina groups, but I'm happy to have anybody join. And these are going to be focusing on Diabetes Camp and about a new presentation I have put together called Conversations Around CGM. I need to catch your name for this. Maybe you guys can help. I'll put it in the group. It's basically how to keep remote monitoring from driving you as the parent bananas and not getting in the way of a great relationship with your kid. Benny and I, knock on wood, 
We have a terrific relationship. He just came in a minute ago and said, hi, nothing to report, just saying hi, checking in on me, making fun of some stuff around my office like he always does on his way to the gym. And I think a lot of that comes from how we managed our remote monitoring over the years with respect and empathy and humor. So I have a lot to say about that as well, obviously. All right. Thank you as always to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you so much for listening. We do not have a newscast this week. We have switched to every other week for those. And I think that is the right balance. It's working out really well so far. So I will see you back here on Tuesday for our next long format episode. Until then, I'm Stacey Sims. Be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.